Welcome back to the workout, as promised. Clean squat and press now. So we're just going to run through each of these individually, ever so briefly. We're going to allow that hand to swing under. We're going to pop, catch. We're going to breathe, flare. We're going to breathe again. Strong core, up and over, and back. And that would be one repetition. Now, you can allow your creativity to flow here. I'm not going to say you have to do this or here is the way that the experts do it or if you're not doing this way, you're missing out. You can change every repetition. You can change every five. You can change every ten. So if I alternate and then maybe do three aside to give you an idea of what it looks like. Just check I'm in shot here. So as you, if I can guarantee you, that's about 130, and my rest in has been as low as 38, not anymore. <laughs> rest in for me is about 40, 46, 48. For 130, I get 130 going for a comfortable jog. Now think about that. 16 kilos of mass used in a very short space. Now it went from here, to here, to here, to here. So what, several feet of transition every few seconds. Not much compared to some of the bigger stuff you can see in the gym. But that's enough to get me puffing and really working that peripheral heart rate. Why? Because instead of just isolating one body part I'm literally working I would easily say a minimum of 70 to 80 percent of the musculature to varying degrees in the body during that entire sequence I can guarantee you that with the right weight even the one under the one that you think is the right weight put five minutes on the clock and do that at a comfortable, safe pace. We're not here to rush it, it's not a sprint. Treat it more like a comfortable jog, yeah? Just going at that speed. It's cardio, it's strength, it's core, it's balance. Why? Because my feet are that long and this mass is moving all over the place. So I'm constantly challenged in terms of my base of support. All of these tiny muscles are switching on to stop me flying around the place. It's also mindful. Why? Well, there's a great big steel ball that I don't want crashing into my head or my kneecaps or to drop on my toes. So I'm aware of where I am in space, where this piece of equipment is in space, both relative to me and as a combination of me. Because there's now double mass, there's me and it working combined. That workout alone, if it was all you did for the next one month, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, for five minutes a day and if you increase that you've got a couple of options you could go seven and a half you could go ten you could keep it at five and go every day you could train twice on each of the day so you could do a morning and evening monday wednesday friday 
I guarantee you that you will feel so much better. These aren't just great for fat loss and strength and conditioning and balance and tendon and ligament and range of motion. They're pretty much, hands down, one of the best tools on the market for overall health. People have said to me, if you could only have one piece of equipment, what would it be? Depending when you'd have asked me, <laughs> in terms of my own fitness, years ago it would have been a 24 kilo kettlebell. Now, that would be a pretty challenging workout, considering I don't use them as much as I used to. I don't have the engine I did when I was 25 years old. Now, I think a 20 would do me. 24, I still train with it, but there would be shorter workouts. There'd be stuff that'd be a lot more challenging. Single leg deadlifts, windmills, bottom up presses, that kind of stuff. They're gonna be a challenge. The 20, I think, would do me. Ideally, I'd, I'd love a, a barbell and some plates, but that's being a bit greedy. If I could only have one piece of equipment, it would be a 20 kilo kettlebell. Why? I can train strength. I can train flexibility in terms of windmill, which you're going to see next. I can train peripheral heart rate. I can increase range of motion. I can combine it with body weight. Now, don't forget, body weight, hands down, is the best gym you will ever have access to. I would advise you to master that at least to some degree before overloading it with all of this other stuff because you're going to put extra on top of something that has weak foundations. And that's why we go through the squat and deadlift at the beginning. We want you to be moving as safely and as efficiently as you can so that you can then add these things on to get the biggest benefit from them. So, clean squat press. Simply work in that three times a week. Five minutes on the clock at a comfortable pace. Maybe test yourself, maybe aim for, I don't know, let, let's say you've got 80 or 90 or 110 reps, whatever it is. Maybe add five next time or even 10. You know, get, get to a pace, you, you can get to a level where you're not going too fast so that it, become, it becomes messy and dangerous. So let me hit maybe 90% speed that I'm comfortable with. Now if you notice, there is a pause, because what's very easy is to, is to press out of the squat and actually get rid of half of the press and making it almost a push press. That, I wouldn't train at that pace. For me, it would be about 70%, particularly if I was going for five or 10 minutes. Why? Well, if you think about it, the tortoise beat the hare for a very good reason. Yeah? <laughs> You're gonna be thrashing away thinking, I've got this, 40 seconds. 50 seconds, my goodness, I can't see straight. <laughs> and you're going to melt like a candle. Take your time. It's a marathon, not a sprint. I would be... Now, I can guarantee you from having done it in the past and variations of it and trained it to other coaches and other athletes at varying levels. I can guarantee you that if you are moving from almost no exercise or just some, you know, some very basic stuff in the gym or maybe some, some power walking or whatever it is you do. You maybe do a, a gentle jog of your local park once or twice a week when you remember. To bring these on board literally will be an anchor in your world, a fixed point, a foundation stone of health, cardiovascular fitness, core, posterior chain, even a little bit of posture change. Because, you know, a lot of us are kind of, I'm guilty of it as well, laptop lifestyle, social media, you know, clients on Zoom and, and Skype and everything else. And yet, years ago, it was one pint of milk on the head, shoulders back. You know, you, you had good posture. And the kettlebells actually demand that from you because think of it like a flat tire. 
you wouldn't want a flat tire on your mountain bike climbing a hill. You want it solid so that it's got minimal friction and it gets you up there. And it's the same with your posture. When there's a weakness, the kettlebell will find that and it will punish you for it and make your training tougher or shoot you down a pathway to an injury. And that's what we don't want. So we want it done properly from the outset. So that workout, let me know how it goes. Do it. Set yourself the test and be the guinea pig. Start today or tomorrow if you're a little bit tired after the tuition. And three times a week, set a timer and do that workout and let me know how it goes. You may well lose weight, obviously depending on your diet and if you're in a calorie deficit. That's the only thing that counts. It doesn't matter what you do. Drop your calories so that you are eating less than you require. And you'll start to shrink away nicely and gradually over time. Rather than losing a kilo every hour, rebounding and yada yada yada. And I won't go there because that is a whole course in itself. Create an energy deficit. Manage stress, that's the big one. Sleep properly. Hydrate yourself. Pay big attention to this. That's another game entirely. And put your exercise in as a foundation stone. Why? I'll tell you why. This vehicle is the only thing you own outright. And it's been leased to you. And it will return at some point in the future. Hopefully many years from now. But you're not sure when. It could be tomorrow. It could be a year, decade. You could have 50 years on this planet. I took a lot of time out from physical training. This is just me being... Steve Unplugged. This is raw and honest. Why? Because I'm all about coaching and helping people. I've heard, I've seen suffering, I've worked with people. You can't imagine what they bring to this moment. You're, you're holding the tears back, thinking, how are you still here? That inner strength, that despair. This vehicle dictates how long you get to spend with your family, your children and your grandchildren. You owe it your best efforts. I can't emphasize this enough. So many people literally live as though they don't give a crap about their body. It's an expendable asset. It messes up, the doctor will fix it. It's something so worthy of your time and attention. And you can get that from literally 10 minutes a day. Decent warm up, that circuit, and then maybe a cool down, some mobility work, some stretching, etc. Just to keep the joints active. Quickest route to injury is loss of range of motion. This vehicle dictates how many sunrises you will see. So don't you owe it to yourself to at least look after it at some level. Now, if, if anything comes from this short, free, video series. If one person picks one of these up, obviously not like I just did. If one person picks one of those up and uses it for some time and maybe feels better, looks better, isn't wheezing going up and down stairs, can run for the bus, doesn't look so bad in their clothes and is worried about being judged and hating who they see in the mirror. To help someone over that hurdle of convincing them that life's over before it's finished, then my job is done. That is the only reason I do this and the only reason I largely focus on the mindset work. To help one person out of tragedy that could be potentially suicidal, to breathe another day and share their gifts. That's why I'm here. So let everyone know that they have that same potential. But they also have that same darkness they're gonna, gonna wrestle with on a day-to-day -day basis. Take ownership of this vehicle. It is yours. It has an expiry date, hopefully many years from now. By looking after it, not only could you potentially add years or at least not detract from the years you've been allotted, but the enjoyment of those you have left will be much better. I've seen people younger than me that literally cannot walk without holding onto a fence 
and puffing and blowing. Not judging anyone, but just to my knowledge, there was no disability there. Obviously, this is a fine line because you know, people have already aimed their guns at me and I need to duck. You can't say it. You, you can say this. And that's the problem. I'm not preaching from the soapbox. So many people fail to accept and take responsibility of this vehicle that it goes to pieces. And let me finish by saying that there's only one thing on this planet that is perfectly fine if left alone, and that's nature. Not us. We need maintenance. We need care. We need love. We need food, water, oxygen, exercise, sleep, stress, management, friendship, challenges, some sense of aspiration. And I can convince you, hopefully, that a huge amount of those are actually a factor of how efficient and healthy this is and how good you feel being you. Because if you hate the person in the mirror, you bring that to every situation, relationship, challenge, and thing you're going to face in life. So my message here is health is wealth. Own it, step up. And make it a thing that's important. Because you are not going to let yourself down anymore. You can trust you. You can rely on you. You will step up and look after this vehicle. And I hope you do.